Okay. Hello, welcome everyone to CS492G, Foundation and Future of Virtual Reality, Artificial Intelligence, and Massively Multi-User Online for English Playing Games. We have already finished part one about virtual reality and part two about artificial intelligence. And now we're starting with part three. And part three, uh, the first talk will be given by Eugene about uh, um, history and philosophy of um, massively multi-user online role-playing games. So with that being said, um, I'll remove my slot light. Slot light, Eugene, and please take them away. Okay, can you see the screen well? Yes. Yes, hello, my name is Yuzin Chu. Today I am going to introduce the history of MMORPG. These are the contents that I will going to deliver today. First, I will start the presentation by introducing the meaning of MMORPG. Then I will go through the history of it for the three stages, earlier stage, first generation and second generation. Then, uh, and finally, I will say about some limitation of MMORPG, so state of the art and the future development of MMORPG. So let's start with what is MMORPG? Do you know the exact meaning of MMORPG? Does anyone know? Mm -hmm. It is an abbreviation for Massively Multiplayer Online World Playing Game. I think you have heard about at least this word RPG. MMORPG is the one version of RPG that a massive number of people, often hundreds or thousands or millions, play the game on the same online server. Star Wars or Final Fantasy and the very famous MMORPG World of Warcraft are the famous example of this genre. So modern MMORPG shares some basic characteristics such as role playing, level designing, fantasy themes, and social interactions. Here I brought an example of MMORPG. This is a short video that introduced the important features of Mabinogi, which is one, one of the famous MMORPG games. So let's see the video first, and I will explain the detailed characteristic of the game in more detail. So
So I think this slogan is very interesting. The MMORPG that brings fantasy to your life. This is a core characteristic of MMORPG. It introduced another life filled with the adventure and epic story to the players. Then how does it how does it become possible? How can it provide players fantastic experience of living, uh, living another life in another world? This is supported by two main features by role playing and social interactions. I will go more details. So one important characteristic of MMORPG is that it is a kind of role playing game. There is a main character that a player can manipulate and role play. Although there exists a bunch of games that players play by manipulating characters, MMORPG games is, is something special. It especially supports role playing by providing special features. So first, it usually provides customizing of player character. This image is a screenshot of the character creating of the game Mabinogi. I will use the example of Mabinogi for the this this part one, the definition of MMORPG. So as the image shows, players can customize his or her character with high degree of freedom. Player may be allowed to choose the character's hairstyle and color of skin, shape of eyes, height, age, and almost everything, almost every detailed part of the character. Also, player may choose a job and a role of his character. For example, a player can choose a job priest and learn priest skills and explore the world as priest. The character will have casts related to his job priest, such as curing NPC and participate in battles by supporting other players. So in short, MMORPG games usually allow players to choose the role that they will have, which will make players more engaged in this new world. Second, players can possess their own things in the world of MMORPG. One of the typical examples is the inventory system shown here. So it is the screenshot of the game also Mabinogi. So almost all MMORPG implements inventory system, not only limited to the Mabinogi. So any item that players gain is automatically stored in the character's inventory. Players can sell their items or buy others' items freely. They can also get clues and accessories to decorate their characters. You can see the player character has some hat and some very special boots. And even they can get some house and furniture. So this is the house of the character in Mabinogi. So obviously the players of MMORPG possess their own, own things in the games, in the game's virtual world. And as the position is essential concept of human, the sense of position may help players to feel their role playing realistic. And the third, players are free in the world of MMORPG. The game may have some main story, such as defeating most monsters, but it is entirely up to the players whether he follow the story or not. Players can just travel over the world and try to reveal the secret of the world and just stop to keep going quests. And MMRPG usually provides very large map and interaction with the environment, which allows players to explore freely. Also, MMRPG provides various activities such as fish, fishing or cooking that players can enjoy freely. From large maps to variety of activities, MMRPG provides high degree of freedom to players so that they feel like the game world is real and they are in the another true existing world through their characters. Also, the another important characteristic of MMRPG is that it is a multiplayer game. Hundred, not only two or three or ten players, hundred. Thousands, often millions of people play the game in the same server. As a kind of multi playing game, MMRP shows two interesting features. So first, it supports interaction between players. It always have the, the game in the genre of MMRPs always have tools to facilitate communication between players. Players can talk with each other using chat system. So you can see that the they are interacting with other with this chat box, I mean, locally. And I didn't 
take the screenshot of that, but there is actually the global chat, chat, chat box that can use to interact with the players in some other places. And they can also express their emotion through characters' actions. And we can see that also players can get along with each other by doing activities together. So such as playing some guitar with other players and doing some campfire. And players can do players can cooperate and also fight with each other. So this is the screenshot of rate. They can cooperate with other players to, to defeat this powerful monster, which is called Boost Raid. And they can fight with other players one to one, which is called PvP, player with player. Trust system, race system, and PvP system is very popular component of modern MMORPG. Second, MMORPG supports social relationship of players systematically. It supports in-game guilds and clan system. This is actually guild guild soon, so the member of the guild guild is come together and talk about their guilds. And often it it even provides some family system or marriage system. So and also includes some adoption of childs of other players. And of course, the this the this adoption of child and uh, the child of this adoption is other player who is just role playing the child character. So this kind of social relation is developed inside the world of MMORPG games, whether the M the game support this kind of relation or not. Even though the game did not support this kind of relationship systematically, the, the users made this relationship outside the game using some other, other social community and if, using the open chatting of other chatting systems such as Kakaoto. So MMORPG is a game genre that best do the term miniature version of real society. These kinds of concepts are very familiar to us living in the modern society. However, the form of the earlier MMORPG was significantly different from the form of modern MMORPG. Then how was the first stage of MMORPG? How does it begin and how does it develop? I think it is valuable to look into. So I will go through the history of MMORPG. So this, these are the famous examples of past MMORPG. So have you ever heard some of these games? I think some of you heard about Ultima Online. This is very famous one, or at least the World of Warcraft, even though you did not play. I think so. This these kinds of game, games can be divided into three stages. First were the earlier stages, and second were first general stages, and second general stages. So I will go details one by one to these kind of stages. So let's start with the very earlier stages. So in 1961, the first online game was developed through the Plato. Plato is the abbreviation of programmed logic for automatic teaching operations. So it was first developed for the educational purpose, but because it was able to play together in one server for many people, so it was adopted to other areas. So one of the representative areas was game. So popular games like Space War, Moria, and Avatar was developed by this Plato machine. So actually, it is hard to say that this kind of game is MMORPG. So there was no store lines, no characters, and it only support only two or few players. It is so it is hard to say it is massive play player online game, but it is very valuable that it was the first kind of online game. After the stage of the this kind of plateau machine games, then there was the bot games. So it is the abbreviation of multi user dungeon. It was first developed in the United Kingdom, which is the meeting of the RPG game and online game. So it, the important, the famous game of math game is Island of Casimia and Arstead. So it is basically text-based and you can see that. And some of them adopt some graphical features. So this kind 
of graphical features using ASCII code, but actually it did not use any GUI graphical user interaction. So it is very far away from the modern MMORPG using very, very beautiful graphic features. However, it adopted two important features of MMORPG. One is that they actually provide adventure of players. They can go through the fantasy world and fight with monster and get defeated with monster. This kind of main story was adopted to these mod games. And also it provides some multi-user players. So there was, they can cooperate with other players in this server and even make a party or fight with monster together. So even it is almost text basis and very different from the modern MMORPG, it is really over to think about this mod games because it is published the basic concept of MMORPG. So for the next generation, um, well, this kind of games also provide some interesting things of MMORPG. It was not that interesting for people because it is only text-based. So the first, actually MMORPG can be said that starting from the first generation, which adopted some graphic features. The first game which adopted the graphic, graphical environment is the Neverwinter Nights. So it started at 1991. So it caught players' attention with graphics and so and very allure of playing with others remotely. So it didn't use GU environment still, but it actually introduced the PvP and guild system. So this kind of social inter interaction or sports adopted to the MMORPG game in this stage. So the game magazine Games Spy said that hundreds of lower players play the game in the same server. So this is the first stage of the MMORPG. And also after 1995, the NSFNET start provides the internet to the the internet internet was very developed it and some people in I'm sorry, I my script was stopped. So, oh sorry. So, in December fifty, the first, and also December fifty, the Verdium fifty nine, the game Verdium fifty nine was provided, and it was very important game because it used very large network and for never nice that because of the limitation of internet, not much players can play together, but. With Meridian 59, with the development of internet or uh, massive players, so hundreds of thousand players can play together. So actually, you can say that the the definition of MMORPG, the massive multi user, is started in this Meridian 59. Also, for, for the later stage of first generation, there are the famous games such as Ultima Online and Lineage, Lineage was developed. So after 1995, the computing environment was developed greatly. And also the graphical environment was developed greatly. So now the these games use the GUI systems. So the graphic is greatly improved compared to the previous ones. So in this stage, the 19, after the 1995, the MMORPG games were popularized to the people. So until these times, the MMORPG was not that famous. Only a few people play these games and it was only the game for the minor, minor people, but now it becomes the major games. So before these times, there was even no word, there was even the word MMORPG was not popularized. Usually this kind of games were called graphical mod. You remember this word mod? It is called only graphical mod, but at this generation, the person, Richard, finally used the word MMORPG first time. And after this time, the MMORPG replaced the word graphical, M graphical mod. And this time, this generation is important because it popularized this word. And also with the advanced graphics and high degree of freedom.
So let's go to the second generation. The limitation of first generation is that it is barely the limited play pattern and it is because of the limitation of computing system, the activities that players can play in this game is very limited. So this kind of limitation is improved in the second generation. So Evercast and Maple Story and Mabinogi adopted some various activities and a high degree of freedom that the first generation games cannot provide. So Evercast provides some PvP and race system. So it was it was first developed at 1999. So the two important features of Evercast was that first it it developed the 3D graphics. So until these times, you can see that it is almost 2D graphics, but for Evercrest, the stage of Evercrest, it is graphic is very greatly developed and it is almost 3D graphics. And also it it adopted the system of the party. So on before the second generation, this ultimate online or lineage or never until lives, it was just the games that the multi users play the games together, but there is actually no cooperation or cooperation systems. So they just play together, but there is no concept of party. They just play individually. But from the EverQuest, they adopted the system of the party. So finally, there became some, some concept of priest or tanker or the warrior. So they take part of the party and they take different roles. Also, the cooperation is mandatory. And so the social interaction will be developed from the time of the EverQuest. And Maple Story focuses on the action players, action playing. So EverQuest books. So it is the it developed some different system to Evercast and Mabinogi adopted some daily lives of the daily activities such as fishing or shipping or some cooking. So the, these three games developed the different as some different contents. So it extend the contents of the previous generation's games and it introduced cooperation and very variety of systems such as PVE, raid or PVP. And this the second the previous stage of the second generation the games developed in different ways so Evercast only supports some PVE system and Maple Story focus on the action and Mabinogi focus on the daily life. But after the for the later time of the second generation, the game World of Warcraft come out and this was a very this is very famous system and it integrates the all these fact all these activities that each game used differently. So it adopted some PVE of the Everquest and some action of the Maple Story and some daily lives of Mobinogi. So this is the final, it also it integrates the all interesting points of the, um, the previous MMORPG games. And it also, so it is very, it becomes very famous and it is the start of the, the higher time of the MMORPG games. So I briefly go through the history of the MMORPG games. And let's I'm going to talk about the state of the art of this MMORPG games. So this is the article that I, I caught from I bring from the Google. So it says the area of MMO is gone, isn't it? So there is so many opinion that saying MMO the state of MMO is gone. There is few reasons that this kind of opinion is coming. So the very first reason of this kind of opinion is that it is the development cost of the MMO RPG is too high. So because it has to develop the various features from from some PVE, so most, it have to design the level system, skill system, and fighting with the boost, boost monsters, raid system, and the PVP system with other players, and even the daily daily life. So, so so skills of so fishing or and social interest systems. So there is too much system that the MMORP should develop. So development cost is very high, and also it requires too much time. So 
as you can expect, because there are too much activities, it takes too much time to play the games. So it is very different from the current trend of the games. So you can think about the famous current games such as so Pokemon Go. So this kind of game doesn't require the most time to play, but the popular modern game took too much time to play. So this is not very good to our modern trends. And also, because it requires too much time, the player pool is very limited. So player cannot play two or more games in in once. So players who it is very hard to play the World of Warcraft and Maple Story in both in once. So the users is the user number of users is very limited. So because the development cost is too hard, cost the development cost is too high and the users is limited. So it is even hard to try the innovation. So you cannot try some adventure if the cost is too high. So these are the adventure and these are the limitation of the MMORPG. So now people are saying that the area is of MMORPG is gone. However, even though the, the cost is high, the, the power of MMORPG is very strong if it is become success. So World of Warcraft or EVE Online, Maple Story, these kinds of games become very famous. And after they become famous, a lot of other projects. So we can see that World of they become some movie or become some comic books. And so the when it becomes very famous, then the, the world of the MMORPG becomes some IP. Uh, and it is very interesting and it it gives very high revenue so it is very interesting for develop this mmrpg so then how can we overcome this kind of limitation and go to the future of mmrpg this is the very this is very interesting opinion of the game designer ryan Delcy. The theme park MMO is dead and we should enter the sandbox. So let's see the video first before I talk detail about the theme park and MMO and sandbox systems. Future Paco. That reminds me. Morris. This is amazing. I had no idea. <sighs> <laughs> Look at this. Games I've never heard of. Wait a minute. That reminds me. What precisely is the goal of the game that we're playing now? You have to play the game to find out why you're playing the game. It's the future, Paco. You'll see how natural it feels. future too? Ever see anything like this before? These are delicate. You got to be careful. Yes, I can imagine. Cortical systematics is the latest and the hottest. Not just a new game, but a new system. Will it work with an industry standard bioport? I'm Darcy Nader. Welcome to Darcy Nader's Game Emporium. Is there anything I can be uh, helping you with? We're just looking. Uh, I have what you're looking for. Who sent you? It's none of your business who sent us. We're here. That's all that matters.
What happened? I... I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> it's your character who said it. It's kind of a schizophrenic feeling, isn't it? You'll get used to it. There are things that have to be said to advance the plot and establish the characters, and those things get said whether you want to say them or not. Don't fight it. Just go with it. But should you be saying this in front of him? Look at him. What's he doing? He's gone into a game loop. He won't come out of it until you give him the proper line of game dialogue. Uh, this is tricky. Start by repeating your last line. Include his name so he knows you're talking to him. We're here, Darcy Nader. And that's all that matters. Yes, you're right. That is all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> now, you said you have what we want. We're waiting. You're going to need these micropods to download your new identities. I assume that... So, it is different with the current MMORPG because it is inside the VR system, but we can see a few interesting points of this video. So, the main player character should say some keywords. So, even though he doesn't want to say that kind of things, he has to say to progress the game. And also, the NPC didn't respond to the any keywords that he, he was not programmed to respond. So, even though the, these players talk about the other things, the NPC didn't respond, and they have to say keyword to process the games. So the current games are designed as theme perks. Theme perk games. The theme perk games means that it is designed, the game designer designed the games to the players to play the game in a certain way. So, so the players cannot so even though I said the MRPG adopts the high degree of freedom, actually it is limited. How much the contents is extended, there is a very limited point that players cannot go for. So sandbox game is the game that go through the limitations. So let me you explain the game with the more let me explain the definition of the sandbox game with the more detailed example. So let's think about the game if online. If online is said to be the be the future generation, so it adopted high degree of freedom, and there is actually no set it goal. So defeating the most most monster main scenario and such kind of things, it just lead players to the very large world, large world and just let people, the players to play as they want. Many things are allowed in this system, so the players can fight with other players, which called PvP freely. So in other games, such as Mabinogi, the PvP was only limited to the certain places, and only the both players were agreed, but in EVE Online, the PvP can, the area that pvp is allowed is very large and players can fight with each other even though they the other players agree so it is very similar to real world so the with a lot of freedom and the very the most important part is that the players can influence the world so let me go through more detail so let's say that there is two area a and b and there is a river between them and in eve online and talk about the theme play, theme park games and the sandbox play game. So in sandbox games, so in theme park game, players cannot make some bridge or cannot make bridge or destroy bridge in the system. So players cannot affect to the world and to the environment. But in sandbox game, players can actually influence the world. If players build the this bridge the world, then this bridge will lap, and other players can also go through this bridge. And if 
other it one players destroy this bridge, then the bridge will disappear, and other players cannot go through this bridge. So it allows the players to interact with the world with very large freedom, large degree of freedom. So this is the part of the sandbox play, sandbox game. So high degree of freedom, including no limit almost no limitation in activities and the influence to the world. So the very representative example is this one, if online, which allow free PVP and some even the crime and even some lie and fighting and all of the things very freely. Also, we can think about the combination of MMORPG with AR or VR or AI. So one popular example of the combination with AR is this one, Pokemon Go. So we actually the Pokemon Go is the kind of MMORPG because we role play as the, is this not, it is hard to say strictly MMORPG, but this adopts some kind of concept of MMORPG. So we can play, we can play this game as some other players. So we, actually act like, like we are inside the Pokemon world. So it it provides some concept of RPG and we also also socially communicate with other players. So this is this kind of this book, this game Pokemon game can also adopt some kind of concept of MMORPG. So we can think about the future of MMORPG through this game. So the combination of the RPG world and AR is very powerful. So it improved the feeling of players that they are in the another world. So it so the, it is more realistic and it feels that we are really in the another world. So it is it feels that it it so players feel it more attractive. And another example will be the combination with VR. So actually there is no VR game in MMORPG, but there is the, the a few VR game is popularized. We can even play some shooting games in very close place, um, Gungdong. Do you know Gungdong? So there is a few VR games that we can play and the VR game genre is becoming developing so in future maybe MMORPG can also be played with VR. So oh as as the game with the AR such as Pokemon Go, VR will also improve the play, players feeling of the real players. It will also help players to feel the world more realistic. So it will make the MMORPG game more attractive. And also the final stage of the MMORPG will be the combination with the AI and VR. So I, I think that you remember the, the very first presentation of our class. So in the class of the VR, we see the example of sort of sword art online. In the sword art online game that the players come into the VR and they contact with some some NPC, which are very high, which are very highly intelligent. So they are there's almost similar to people. And actually the world is very similar to real world. And it is, and we can also think about the movie of the matrix. So in in such kind of virtual world, players, it is almost there's almost no different with the real world and the virtual world. So in the future, if the MMRPG combined with the AR or VR, then maybe it will provide the completely new world. And it will provide a fantasy life to people. So, so even the cur the current stage of MRPG is very limited because of the limitation of technology. AR or VR or AR, any of this technology is de develop is not developed enough to adopt it to MMRPG games. But if this kind of technology developed it, then and it is adopted to MMORPG, then I think that a new boom of MMORPG will come up. And so this genre is very attractive and interesting part who is thinking about the future game genre. So this is the end of my presentation. I'm very, and I will take some questions for my presentation. Thank you.
Yes, thank you so much. And as usual, now we take a short break for you guys to digest and to come up with questions, comments about the content. So brief break now, like uh, uh, five minutes. And here we are back online. So yes, first of all, thank you very much, Eugene, for this presentation. And uh, now we have time to ask some questions and to provide some comments about the content of the talk, not about quality. That will be a separate discussion of the record later. So, questions? I can start with a very simple question. What is your favorite MMORPG? Oh, my favorite MMORPG is actually Babi So, oh. <laughs> that is the very reason that I introduced the game with this example. Mm -hmm. How about the other participants? Would you mind sharing or typing in the chat? What is your favorite MMORPG? My favorite MMORPG is Lost Ark. You have a heard it. <laughs> Would you consider Minecraft server with like a lot of player MMORPG? Oh, can, hello? Oh, pardon? Oh, can you hear me? Oh, Hello. it is a, a little bit noisy. Could you? Oh, all right. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, yes. It, now it's okay. Clean. Right. Uh, would you consider Minecraft server with a lot of player MMORPG? Minecraft server? Yeah. Mm. Oh. Minecraft? Yep. Mm, yes, I. Uh, mm, oh, I, I will think. Oh, yeah. thirty seconds. Yeah, I mean, oh, uh, yeah, just my favorite game, and I think it's kind of similar to MMO in some sense. Oh, uh, I think it is hard to say MMO PG because the it is very. The content of it is very limited, so players are only. I, I'm not. I didn't play at Minecraft, so oh. I'm not sure. But I remember that it all almost it allow only a few activities. So changing the environment. Is there mm. any activities such as some um, fighting or some or or it it provides some story or some other activities? Actually, yes. Uh, because when because my craft server often have like support for like programming and commands, so server admin can like maybe create custom game mode or maybe some fighting arena or yeah, but it would fall more category in something like uh, you mentioned the future of MORPG will be for player to create their own content, right? Yes. So it's probably more closer like that because Minecraft has no built-in story of leveling, but player can create their own game mode mm -hmm. in the server. Oh, but but I think though also the one of the important part of the MMORPG is the role playing, mm. and for the role playing, I think there should be some contest that the players can engage. Um. Uh, uh, I think the word right. of word engage is not correct. Mm. To immerse, maybe, maybe. Yes, maybe. Ah, right. Yes. Mm. So if if some Minecraft server is more developed, and the player can do more activities. So is there is Minecraft has some NPC? Um. Yep. They have NPC, though they are very dumb. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it is hard to yeah. say because I didn't know the game at all. Oh, okay. Maybe I can provide some context then. So, yeah. So if you play single player in Minecraft, Minecraft it will be just yeah, just building house and chopping down tree. But for multiplayer, usually people in server often like also role play because when let's say you build house, you already role play to some degree. You you own a house, you can visit your neighbor house, right? Yes. Uh, but so that is the most scale server, but there are a lot of large scale server like uh what do you call? I forgot the name. I haven't played in years. Uh yeah, we have like hundreds of players and they often have rule, they have society, but all of those are all what user decide to do. So it's not like there is no rule that the developer make, it's just what hundreds of your, those players agree to do together. Well, so then if the, the stage of the Minecraft is, so the inner society of Minecraft is almost as the society. So if the player, com if the player com forms, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm very sorry to my very limited English. If it is, if the players of the Minecraft can co be some, consist some society with some various roles and various jobs, then I think it can be kind of MMORPG. Yeah, but it's different kind, right? It's not like develop, developer make it, but player do it themselves. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And Jehi likes Maple Story. Other examples, other favorite um, RPGs? Okay. More questions? So when we talked about artificial intelligence, there I mentioned the Hofstetter test. In the Hofstetter test, the user in a game has to write a game inside the game, to write a virtual reality inside of a virtual reality. Can you think of uh, is any of the current uh, um, RPGs able to to design a game inside the game. Design the game inside the game. Mm. Mm. Players can play game inside the MMORPG. Mm -hmm. It is systematically supported, and even without the system support, they can actually do games with social communication, but I think it is not in the stage that they can actually develop some online game inside the MMORPG. Mm -hmm. Yes. So because of the limitation of still the game activities of MMORPG is very limited. So yes. This mm. kind of the ultimate sandbox model, right? If yes, it will be ultimate this... sandbox models, but I think we were not in the stage yet. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, in Ultima, you can yes. play old versions of Ultima game. So you it's enter some oh. some house in yes. Ultima game, and in that house. Uh, there's a console where you can play older versions of the Ultima game, but oh. this is still yeah. not user design game. This is still limited. Yes, I think that kind of predefined game design, predefined designing system, 
is all is provided, then game design may be possible with with very limited free liberty. And uh, regarding multi-user dungeon, also if if I remember correctly, if once uh, the user once a player has reached a certain level inside the game then the user can design his or her own uh but his or her own multi-user dungeon inside a, a multi-user dungeon game if i remember correctly it's been a long time though oh i didn't know about that oh Maybe someone can check online. Oh, yes, I will check in online. So inside of Vertidor. So what is the name of that game? Maybe I'm wrong. Never mind. Never mind. Okay, so let's move on. Other questions, discussion, comment. So one uh, particular aspect is that these games try to recreate our lives, right? Yes. So it's it's kind of very traditional. There's kind of a like raids. Raid is a very uh, ancient form of uh, uh, human society, right? It was like the Vikings made raids, and then there's concept that you emphasize like family uh, with a baby. This is also also very traditional. So it's all trying to recreate our current human society within the game. Yes. Are you aware of anything that is out of the box, non-standard social uh, context, non-standard occupations? Occupations? Uh, work. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Oh, pardon, could you say one more time? Right, so, wow. yeah, raid, going for raid is a very old type of work, like yes. one or two thousand years old. Um, but are there games that, uh, um, about the future, society or future type of work do you, do you know such games oh yes actually the mmrpg is based on fantasy and some of them are best based on science, science fiction mm -hmm. so as i remember that the i remember that it, the if the the Oh, wait a minute. The background of the game Eve Online is the the space. So inside of Eve Online, actually the people go out to space and then go to the Eve Online world. So I remember there was some science fictional parts that adopted some future technologies. Mm -hmm. And maybe there will be some jobs related to that, I think. Thank you. Very interesting. Okay, more questions, discussions, comments? Uh... I want to know, like, if any of you got, 
if any of people in here know the game called Club, uh, Club Penguin. I think, Penguin? can you speak up a little bit Hello. more louder? Can you, can you hear me? It's very simple, it, low, no, low level. Um, I, I am not sure how to increase my volume. Okay, then just oh. try, yes? Okay. Um, I'm curious, do any of you guys in here know the game called Club Penguin? It was like a game by Disney where we play at, where we play as um penguins and like I believe that that was one of the MMORPG, but like after you say that some criteria including having class, having fights, that it doesn't apply to the game Club Penguin at all, but I think that it's still massively multiplayer and a role-playing game. Oh, could you say the the title of the game one more time? Um, Club Penguin. Club like, Penguin. Yes. Uh, because I didn't know the game, I will. I am searching for it. Yes. I mean, it's actually like a game for children. So, and I played it when I was a kid. So. Oh, so this game has some role playing and some some multiplayer, but actually it doesn't have guild or such system. Yes, there's no guild. Yeah, there's no guild. There's no like PvP. There's no level up. Wait. Oh, I think it no. is. It can be. It can be included in the first generation games. So before the development of the game EverQuest, actually there was no cooperation system. So it is just like the club penguin. But there is a word and players pick a rule and they they just play around and they come into the same server at the one time. But actually there was not enough social co social social party system. They are just existing there together but there was not systemically supported some party systems before the Evercast before the Evertest game was developed. So this game is maybe kind of the previous version of MMORPG. And also Yes. Yeah, that's all for my question. Thank you. Uh, I have a comment, not a question. Oh, yes. Yes, sorry. I'm currently on mobile, so I can't start my video, but <clears throat> uh, I think it is great that you introduced all of the histories, the major turning points in this history of MMORPG. But one of the greatest characteristics that I think MMORPG must have it's its business model or in abbreviation BM, because you don't just make games massive online games for fun. <clears throat> for example, work, World of Warcraft uses, mm, how should I put it? A monthly charge for its players. Yes. And if we let Minecraft be MMORPG, Minecraft itself is a product that is sold on the Microsoft Store. Well, and I think this kind of business models are also developing alongside the development of technology because 
the business model itself affects how people treat the games. If you're not interested in World of Warcraft anymore, you don't pay for them anymore. So if you're a game like World of Warcraft, you should keep on giving players challenges and new contents that they should be engaged in. If they fail to, and which World of Warcraft actually did for the last several years, their users numbers and equivalently their earnings would fall. For other MMORPGs, some of them provide free services for anyone, but keeps an privileged service such as, uh, as you have said, the customizations, the skins, or some decorations as a purchase product. And if you're playing games such as that, then most of the technologies or some contents would be focused on them as well. I think these kind of business models are also very pivotal when we are talking about MMORPGs. I actually investigate the, the such kind of business model, but the reason that I didn't deal with that kind of system in my presentation is that I think the development of MMORPG and development of the business model is totally different. So I think one of one kind of MMORPG can choose all or uh, one of the very various business models. So it is the different topic with MMORPG, but that but it was my initial thought. But after I hear your opinion, I think your opinion is is also right and very interesting. Yes, but I think it is also very important point of the MMORPG because it requires very it requires very high cost and it is because the 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 oh the they the people are not doing business for just free they want money so for the development of the MMR, I think it is also the, the important part. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> that ends our discussion about the content. And now we move on to give feedback about the style and quality of the presentation. And this is off the record. Right, so we've uh, uh, resorted to discussing a related game, Star Citizen. And now it's time to wrap things up. So thank you very much again, Eugene, for this great presentation. Thanks everybody for joining in online. That's all for today. Um, remember your essays and then we'll reconvene on next Tuesday. Class is dismissed, except for yeah, I would like to talk to Arnold and uh, and to Pasawat, please. So everybody else, feel free to sign off. Thanks again and goodbye. Thank, Thank you. you.